Okay, um, so this is a logic design lecture for Friday, the uh, 25th of September. Uh, but I'm also going to go a little long, and uh, I'm going to include uh, Monday, which would be, let's see, 26th, 27th, 28th, the 28th of September. Let's look at the uh, syllabus real quick, and then we'll, okay, there we go, here. Uh, so we're finishing up week five today, uh, and then we'll also be starting week six. So we're supposed to finish five, but we've already finished five. Uh, I may go back and, uh, and uh, uh, look at some problems in homework five in the second part. Uh, but anyway, uh, so you can watch the whole video and you'll basically have covered the lectures for Friday and for Monday. And I'll, I'll, go, about, I'll go about an hour and 15 minutes today, um, or maybe an hour 20, a little bit long. Um, or maybe not quite that long, but we'll cover, cover this. So I will cover, uh, I'm going to start on unit six. Uh, remember that the homework is due on the 30th, and that would be homework five. Um, I, what I'm also going to do is uh, today I'm going to work on the gr group project assignments, and I'll send those out. And then uh, what I would uh, like you to do is on my office hours on Monday, uh, September 28th at noon, uh, you can zoom, and th those links are on Blackboard. So let's see, I can pull those up. Um, let's pull them up um, real quick here. I'll show you that. And, um, <clears throat> and that will, uh, and then we'll work out any problems uh, at, on, during office hours on Monday. And let's see, so here we do uh, this, uh, logic design, this is it. Did I get it? Yeah. Okay. So let me let me switch this over. Okay. So uh, so here's the Zoom link for office hours, as you know, and uh, that'll be September uh, the 28th. So just click on uh, this link up here, and away you go. Uh, turn on your video when you do that, so I can see it. That always really helps. Um, okay. And then um, so syllabus. Uh, so we're, we'll finish Friday and we'll do Monday all in one lecture today. And I'll just do one quiz too. Or yeah, I'll probably just do one quiz. Uh, I might split the lecture up too, but anyway, I'm going to record it all now. Uh, in any event, maybe I will split it up. All right, uh, let's get rid of that. And then let's uh, go ahead and uh, crank up. Um, there we go. And then I'm going to shrink down myself here uh, there even more oh I didn't obviously didn't get that right okay there we go okay so now we'll put me right about over there hopefully that'll work just fine and I think the resolution should be better on this video I finally figured out the setting that I needed to deal with in uh, OBS uh, okay, so unit six, Queenie McCluskey. So you will have a quiz on Queenie McCluskey. And uh, uh, I'm not quite sure. I guess we'll have you turn that in as a quiz. And uh, this, you'll probably, you can, do, you can do it online or you can, uh, or you can take a picture of it on your phone and uh, upload the picture in, in a Word document or a, or a uh, PDF. Um, you don't have to have a printer. Uh, you can do it on. You can. You can also do it uh, in a Word document if you want. Uh, but we'll eventually get around to this Quinny McCluskey quiz. I don't know when that's scheduled, but it's on the. It's on the docket uh, in a week or two. Um, all right. So we're going to cover the Quinny Quinny McCluskey method. This is a, another way to simplify a logic expression. Now. Uh, as part of the Queen and McCluskey, there's there's this Petrix method, that's a way to get the minimum solution once you develop all the prime implicants and everything. Queen and McCluskey uh, uses prime implicants, so I'm I'm going to go I'm, I'm I'll take a minute and just uh, redefine uh, the prime implicants. Uh, I'll do that as a little example here in just a second. But um, but what I want you to keep in mind is that uh, is that this is this method totally revolves around developing prime implicants. It consists of two charts. The first chart 
is the chart to uh, develop all the prime implicants. And the second chart is to pick the prime implicants we need for the best solution. Now, for, for just a few variables, that usually doesn't get too crazy. But this method will work up to maybe even 12, 13, uh, 14 variables. Uh, so it's, it's more powerful than a KMAP, which really is pretty crippled when it gets to six variables. Uh, you can probably do five just fine, and, four is, and three and four are fine, two, two, three, and four are fine. But uh, any more than six variables is not really, is not directly possible with uh, the KMAP unless you do something like a special functions where only a few of the, ver of, the, of, the, of, the, of the variables actually uh, change. Um, and then you can do things like map entered variables. I'm not going to teach that because I, I think it's better to use machine-based techniques. But this is a technique that could be implemented uh, as a computer program. And uh, so that's one of the reasons that we cover it. Um, you probably will never use this uh, in your engineering life, but it's good to know kind of how, uh, you know, another method that can be used with more variables. And uh, so anyway, so we're going to learn Queenie McCluskey. You're going you're gonna to do a quiz on it, but it will not ever be on any other test other than the one quiz that we'll do. And again, Patrick's method is just uh, is just if you're doing a, fair, a fairly high number of variables with Kalini McCluskey, Patrick's method might be necessary to pick the best solution once you get all the essentials identified. Um, we'll also show you how to do Kalini McCluskey with incompletely specified functions. In other words, functions that have don't cares. Um, and like I said, we're not going to talk about map entered variables, although the book does cover that. Okay, so. First, let me talk about prime implicants again. So I'm going to, let me bring up, uh, not this one, this one, this one. Oh, no, this one. Oh, crap. Oh, it died, I guess. Okay, let's see if I can bring it back up. Uh, I am just really getting... Yeah, okay, this looks like it's going to work. Okay, good. All right, so Lord knows what a, what a mess, huh? Okay, so hopefully I've got the right thing picked. All right, so let's do a, let's do a K map. Uh, and so we'll do a four variable K map. And, um, uh, so we'll just we'll just talk about we'll put in some ones. Um, oh, I left off. Uh, left off. One more line. Okay, and then we have one more line here, and maybe we have uh, so something like that. Okay. Maybe something like that. All right, so so when you look at this, you might not see all the groups of four that exist. But here is one group of four. Maybe I'll even change colors. Uh, here's another group of four. Um, and then here we have a group of two. So, so this can be solved. So now let's look at what the prime implicants are. So... Uh, so all three of these are prime implicants, okay? Uh, and so you have one, two, and that's the other part of that, and three. So there, there are three prime implicants. Here, I'm gonna switch back. So the three prime implicants, and um, of those, uh, they're all essential. And there really aren't anything. There's really, there's really no. Uh, I don't. I don't even think there are any consensus terms in this situation. Um, so, let's let's just for practice. Let's see what they are. So the, up, we do A B across the top, C D down the side. So this, if we do uh, the ones, now we could also look at the max terms. But I'm going to stick with the min terms for right now. So this this group of four that's combined with these two, uh, these four boxes. Since 
all these occur in A prime. Remember, this is A, the middle two row columns are B, the bottom two rows are C, and the middle two rows are D. So this is these are all in A prime. So you know it's going to be A prime. We're going to drop two variables because we've linked four boxes. So what so what's the other variable that's left? Well, it's not C because it's one here and zero there. Um, it's not it's uh, it's not B because B is zero in this row and one here. But it is D because D is D prime in both of these rows. So it's A prime D prime. So that's that term. And then we're going to add to it this group here, which is going to be, uh, it's not A because A changes, so it's B prime, B prime, and it looks like it's in C, and it's just going to, again, we're going to drop two variables, so we just need two variables, so it's B prime C, and then the final is a just two boxes, so that'll be a three variable term, and it's clearly going to be D, it's clearly going to be A, B prime, D, and that's it. A, B prime, D. So our final solution is right there. Uh, A prime, D prime, plus B prime, C, plus A, B prime, D. All right, and I guess I could have even put my face in there. All right, so that 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 hopefully gives you an idea. So so those are those are some those are those are all those were prime implicants. And in this case, all of them were essential prime implicants, which isn't always the case, I understand. Okay, so uh, so hopefully that reminds you about prime implicants. Now, the way we're gonna do this Queenie McCluskey thing, uh, we're gonna make basically a chart to develop all the prime implicants, and then a chart to select the minimum set of prime implicants to uh, cover all the ones. Um, and that minimum set will have all of the essentials. Now, in the example I just did, uh, in the example I just did, all of those, uh, all of those were. Oh, see it, it, it die. It, if you take it off, it does. It just goes away. Boy, that is really super irritating. Oh, yeah. Let me see if I can get this back easily. I, it should be better than this. I, I don't know. Maybe maybe it will work with one of these. I have not figured this out. So, new section, Paul's notebook. Let's see. Open other notebooks. One drive. Try this. No, nope, that wasn't it. I don't know. Sync to OneDrive. Okay, yeah, I think this is it. All right, well, I don't know. Okay, well, I'm still learning how to do this. Uh, somebody helped me the other day, and it, it actually could work, but it New section one. New section one. Um, so let's see. Sorry, I'm gonna qu I'll quit here soon. Okay. New section one. Um, and then, so that is. Uh, kind. Okay, so let's see if I can do that. New section one, and what is it? It's uh, K I N D. K I N D. So let's see. So we'll see. Uh, K I N D. No. Okay, I give up. No, okay, sorry. Never mind. Well, anyway, uh, I don't know. I guess we'll.
So something's problematic here. I don't know. I give up. Okay. All right. Well, whatever. Okay, so let me just go through this and we'll worry about getting that to work later. Anyway, uh, so so keep in mind, you, you, ha you do have to understand a prime implicant. And again, the prime imp a prime implicant is where you have uh, either one box all by itself that can't be combined with any other box, or two boxes that can't be combined with two other boxes to make a group of four, or a group of four that can't be combined with another group of four to make a group of eight. So when you've combined as much as you can, you have prime implicants. Uh, now you have to pay attention because if you have an opportunity to combine that you don't see, then that's going to cause problems. Uh, and you're going to think something's prime when it's not. But the Queenie McCluskey method will uh, automatically develop all the prime implicants. Okay. And, uh, and every prime implicant is made up of some number of min terms. So for instance, if you've combined four boxes, each box represents a min term. So that would be four min terms. Uh, all right. So we start, we start with a, a problem. Uh, and we, we, we start with the min term. So we get a problem usually in, in shorthand notation where we have f equals the sum of all the min terms m and then we have 0 comma 3 comma whatever uh, and in so some number of variables again we can have maybe up to 15 variables for Queenie McCluskey although we're not going to do one with that many because it gets very tedious we re represent each of our min terms in a funny notation so for instance let's say we had min term uh, this would be min term uh, one zero one one so that would be uh min term 11 okay so in that case uh for min term 11 we would have uh, uh we would represent it of course it would be a b prime c d well we'd represent it one zero one one where the one represents an a because it's not a zero it's a one the zero it, it, that position is for b and it's a zero so that means b prime this is the c position uh, and it's a 1, so that means C. And then finally, the last position is D, which means, uh, since it's a 1, means D, not D prime. So that means, that gives us uh, A, B prime, C, D. So we do that with all the min terms, and then we group them by the number of 1s. This one would have three 1s, so we'd put it in the group with min terms having three 1s. Uh, and for a four-variable problem, which is as much as we're going to do, uh, we're going to have we're going to have min terms with... Um, uh, no ones, potentially there's one that has no ones, that min term zero. Min terms with one one, and there would be four of those. Min terms with two ones, and I forget there's a bunch of those. Min terms with three ones, there's a bunch of those too. Uh, and then min terms with four ones, so there's only one of those, and that would be F, uh, and our 15, and uh, that would be A, B, C, D. Uh, that would be one, 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 one. Okay, so anyway. And then we're going to, since we're group them that way, that means all we have to compare is one group, uh, the, the group above to the group below, because we know that if the group above has, say, one min, one one, and the group below that has two ones, then they, they could potentially differ by a single variable. But if you compare them to the group with three ones, there's no way the groups with one ones could ever combine with the, run, the groups with three ones because they differ by more than a single variable. So you would not be able to use your simplification theorem xy plus xy prime equals x because they would differ by, by more than one variable. All right. Whenever you use a term, you cross it off. And if you uh, find that you can combine terms, then you put that combined term in a new column. And you keep uh, f comparing until you get all the way done comparing all of your uh, all of your uh, terms that are just a single min term. All right, it's probably easier to understand as we go through it. And you keep doing this, creating additional columns until you can combine nothing else. And when you're all done, if you've checked off any time you've used a term, then that term, if it's combined with something else, should is not prime. Therefore, it would not go on the second chart. But if your term has not been ever combined with anything else, then that term has to go on to the next chart, which is your prime implicant selection chart. All right, and we'll talk, we'll cover that when we get to it. Uh, all right, so here's our problem. 
uh, given f uh, equals a, a function of a, b, c, d, equals the sum, that should be a sum sign, not an s, uh, little m, 0, 1, 2, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 14. So those are the min terms that are in the problem. Now, we could do this on a truth table, uh, and the truth table would, would look very, um, it would be very easy to see what the truth table would look like. Maybe I should do that so you can visualize that. Uh, that's probably a good thing to do. Um, so let me get that set up real quick here. Okay, and then we will do that. Uh, let's see, I think I have this one not plugged in. Uh, sorry. switch it over here and switch cameras okay so um, so if we take uh, if we take the min term then um, let's see I was going to show uh, yeah um, yeah so I was going to show how this works okay so so here's our truth table a b c d and our output f okay and so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, can we see all those? Not quite. No, just about. But you'll get the idea. And then 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. And then 1, 2, Three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and then finally, one, two, 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 one, two. All right, and I'm going to draw draw them out in pairs just to just to keep everything straight. All right, so obviously this is min term 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. And you can't quite see the end, but that's okay. Uh, so then, then I look at my original expression. Okay, my original expression was, uh, in fact... Um, 0, 1, 2, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Z so 0, 1, 2, 5, 5, 7, or maybe it was 6, 2. I forgot. I think it was 6, actually. Um, yeah, 1, 2, 5, and it was 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Yeah, and then 14. So 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 14. And then these are all zeros here. Okay, so that's, that's, that's the expression that we're, that's what we're trying to, to work. That's, that's what that truth table would look like, okay? And we get that straight off of the, of the min term notation. All right, so let me, let me switch me back here. And, all right, now, oh, I didn't, all right, so notice then we wrote, wrote them out. So here's min term zero, A prime, B prime, C prime, D prime. Here's min term one, A prime, B prime, C prime, D. Min term two, A prime, B prime, C, D prime. Min term five, A prime, B, C prime, D. Min term six, A prime, B, C, D prime and so forth. And finally, A, B, C, D prime. That would be number 14. All right. Now, now we're going to rewrite them 
and we're going to group them according to the number of ones. So this has no ones. This has one, one. This has one, one. This has one, one. This has two ones, two ones, uh, two ones, two ones. This has three ones, three ones. And then there's no, there's no uh, term with four ones because we didn't have term 15. Now remember, uh, I remember one student one time uh, put all the min terms in their chart. Well, that totally defeats the purpose. That that's like a that's like a that's like a truth table where every row the desired output for f is one. So if you have all the min terms, your answer is f equals one, and you don't even have to do the problem. So that that's a trivial solution. But this is a little more complicated. So okay, now we could do a k-map on this. Uh, and maybe at the end we'll go back and do a k-map just to look at it. Okay, so, uh, oh, okay, yeah, here we go. So we're going to group them. So the first one is we're going to group them. So that's our group 0, no 1s. Now we have group 1, 1, 2, min term 1, 2, and 8. So I'm going to write the min terms here. And then these are going to be our funny notation. So you can actually read off the, the, actual, uh, the actual term. So this would be a prime, b prime, c prime, d prime, and so forth. All right. Now the group two with two ones, that would be a prime, b, c prime, d, and so forth. So those are all the ones with two ones, and then the ones with three ones, uh, seven and fourteen. Okay. Now that's all the min terms we, that we had in our original problem: zero, one, two, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, fourteen. And uh, now we're going to group them. Now the reason we ordered them in this funny way is because it helps us to uh, it, it helps us to group them. Because when we have them ordered like this, uh, we know that we only have to compare group zero with group one. Then we have to compare group one with group two. But there's no need to compare group zero with group two or group three because they clearly will differ by more than one variable. So you. There's no bother. We're, they cannot combine. And then group 2 with group 3. And if we add a group 4, group 3 with group 4, but we don't. Now, there's a funny thing in the very first row what, where we have a group 0. You know that it, they're, they're all going to combine. But in other, group, other comparisons, they may not. So how do you know if, they, if you can combine them? Well, they, they have to match up and only differ by a single variable. And that, and that variable has to be, uh, they, they, you know, they have to line up. So, so 0 and min term 0 and 1, yes, you can combine those. And we'll combine them into a term we'll call 0, 1. And it's going to be 0, 0, 0. And we're going to drop the last, we're going to drop the d variable because d is 0 here and it's 1 here. So we'll drop the d, we'll combine them, and we'll have a 3 variable term instead of a, uh, two var a 4 variable, two 4 variable terms, right? And we'll put a dash where our d used to be. So, so this looks like this, okay, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, dash. So this term is a prime, b prime, c prime. All right. Now, uh, what about 0 and 2? Yes, they'll combine, but we're, what are we going to drop? We're going to drop the c variable here. So we can see it's 0, 2, because we have the 0 min term and the number 2 min term combined, and it's 0, 0, dash, 0. And the same thing for the... 0, 8. We drop the a variable here and it's b prime, c prime, d prime. These now make up the new group 0. No ones. And, uh, and then now we've combined, we've compared all of group 0 to all of group 1. Now we're going to compare every term in group 1 to group 2. So we have to compare min term 1 to 5 and then to 6 and then to 9 and then to 10. We have to do 2 to 5 and then 6 and 9 and 10 and 8 to 5 and 6 and 9 and 10. But they're not all going to combine. And the reason why, we'll see in just a minute. So let's let's compare min term 1 to min term 5. Do they differ by just one variable? And the answer is yes, they do. This one had this one is a prime b prime c prime d. This one is a prime b, c prime, d. So they only differ by the v, b variable. So that's the variable that gets dropped. And then what we'll write down here uh, in our next position, we're going to write, uh, we're going to write a prime, c prime, d. 
and it's going to be 1 comma 5. A prime, C prime, D, because the B variable dropped. Then we're going to compare 1 to 6. Now, it looks like to me that that 1 and 6 differ by three variables. The, uh, the B is 1 here and 0 here, so that's a difference. The C is 1 here and 0 there, so that's a difference. And the D is 0 here and 1 there, so that's also different. So our B, C, and D variables all change between these two, so that's that. therefore we cannot use that uh, simplification theorem because it, it requires only a single variable be different. And uh, so we can't combine 1 with 6, so we don't bother. And now can we combine 1 with 9? Well, surprisingly enough, yes, we can. Uh, and it's actually, if you look at the K-map, it's a wraparound combination. Uh, so we only differ by the A variable. It's 0 here and 1 here, but all the, other zero, it, all the others are the same, 0, 0, 1 and 0, 0, 1. So now we can combine 1, 9. And that's B prime, C prime, D. Now what about 1 and 10? Nope, they differ by three variables. And what about, that's it. So we don't, can't, so we've now compared one with all of our group two variables. Now we take min term two and compare it to all of our group two variables. Uh, so, we're, so we're down here. Can you combine two and five? No, you cannot. They differ by three variables. How about two and six? Yes, they only, they only differ by the B variable is zero here and one there, and the other ones are the same. So now we can write one comma six, two comma six, zero dash one zero are A prime C D prime. All right, and now how about two and uh, nine? Nope, two and 10, yes, that will combine. So now we have two comma 10, and it's zero, it's, it's uh, B prime C D prime. All right, that's now we've compared two to everything in the group two. How about eight? Well, eight can't compare to five or six, but it can compare to both nine and 10. So we write down eight, nine and eight, 10. Okay, now we have to go through group two and compare it to group three. So we do, we compare five to both seven and 14, six to seven and 14, nine to seven and 14, and 10 to seven and 14. So let's do it. So can five combine with seven? Well, yes, they only differ by one variable. Uh, the, the C is one here and it's zero there and everything else is the same. So yes, they compare. So that's five, seven, zero, one, dash one. Our A, A prime B D. And then how about five and 14? Uh, nope, that doesn't work. They differ by two variables. Um, no, they differ by three variables actually. So they're, they're gonna work. And then, uh, so that's, so now, and as we do this, whenever we use one of these, we have to check it off. So we've used zero a couple times, one a couple times, uh, two a couple times, or no, uh, yeah, two a couple times, three times actually. So we check off zero, check off one, check off two, check off eight, check off five, check off six, uh, we use nine, check off nine, use 10, we use 10, check off 10. So all these are checked off, check off seven, Yep, we used it just now. And how about 14? Well, we'll see. So five and seven, but not 14. How about six and seven? Yes, that'll combine. And we'll get zero, one, one, dash. So six, seven, zero, one, one, dash are A prime, B, C. And then what about, um, what about six and 14? Yes, actually, they will also work. So six, 14 and it's dash one one zero. Um, so now <coughs> we've used every single one of these. So so we're not going to have any single boxes, any single any one box, uh, four variable terms in our final uh, prime implicant table, because none of these are prime. They all combined with something. All right. So we we're done with five and six. How about nine? Nine and seven? Nope. And how about nine and fourteen? Nope. So None of those are good. How about 10 and 7? Nope. 10 and 14? Yes. So then we have 10, 14. And uh, it's A, C, D prime because the B changes. It's 1 here and it is 0 there. All right. So now we've done everything. Uh, everything's combined and we've crossed out all of the single variable, uh, single min terms, four variable terms. 
All right, so these are all three variable terms, and they're now organized again in, ver in, in terms with no ones, in this case, 0, 1, 0, 2, and 0, 8, terms with 1, 1, 1, 5, 1, 9, 2, 6, 2, 10, 8, 9, and 8, 10, and terms with three ones, uh, sorry, five sevens also two ones, and so six seven. Oh, sorry, we don't have any terms with three ones. So these are all, these are all terms with one one, and then these are, yeah, okay, I didn't say it right. So terms with zero ones, and actually, uh, I think you can cross all those out. And then, so these are all the no one group, and then here we have uh, one, 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 and you can draw a line here, and this would be uh, then the group with one one, and then we have a group of two ones. We do not have a group of three ones. All right, and then finally, so you can see, now we can divide them up. Zero, no ones, one one, and two ones. Now we repeat the process we just did, only now uh, we were missing a variable in every one of these because these are all three variable terms. We only have to compare the first group with the second group and the second group with the third group. We don't have to compare the first group with the third group because we know they will differ by at least two variables, guaranteed. Now in this case, it's actually easier than what we just did because the first thing you have to do is you have to line up the missing variable. So for instance, can 0, 1 combine with 1, 5? Well, no, because it's missing a D variable. So that automatically excludes it. Uh, and 1, 5 has a D variable. So you can only compare it, the only one in this whole list that has um, a uh, D missing is 8, 9. So that means that uh, 0, 1 will combine with 8, 9. Uh, but that's all. Don't even have to look at the others. And that's gonna, the A variable is going to drop, so we're going to get dash, 0, 0, dash. And the term is going to be 0, 1, 8, 9. So 0, 1, 8, 9, dash, 0, 0, dash. All right, we check off 0, 1, and we check off 8, 9, because that means that uh, we have used them. Next, we'll compare 2. We're looking for a missing C variable. The only missing C variable is 8, 10. Here, we all, all these have something for C, but this doesn't. So can 0, 1 compare with 8, 10? Yes, it can. Uh, it, it can combine. And it would be dash zero dash zero. So zero two eight ten dash zero dash zero. All right, and that would be this one is C prime, uh, sorry, B prime C prime, and this one is B prime D prime. All right, what about, um, and, and we happen to know B prime D prime is the four corners, actually. Um, okay, so what else? Uh, that was it for zero two, so we check off zero two and we check off eight ten. Um, so what about 0, 8? Well, it's missing an A variable. So we have possibly 1, 9, possibly 2, 10. Can it combine with 1, 9? Yes. So that's going to be 0, 8, 1, 9. And it's going to be dash, 0, 0, dash, or B prime, C prime. Well, look it. We already have a B prime, C prime. Isn't that interesting? So we're going to, we're going to be, we're just delete one of these because we don't need two of them. Uh, and that just shows you, anytime you have a group of four, there's always two ways to get to a group of four. Uh, and uh, let me just let me just uh, let me just expand this again. And uh, I should have done this. I'll show you why that's true. Let's say let's say we have a little came out with a with a group of four. We'll do it right here. So here's our K-map. And all right, let's say we have a group of four right here. Well, so you can initially combine these two and initially combine these two and then make the group of four. Or I'll just draw down here. You could also initially combine those two and these two and then combine them to a group of four. So there's always two ways to get to a group of four. And that's why you always have a redundant, uh, redundant one uh, there.
Okay, let's switch me back. Okay, and I'll move myself just a little further. Okay, now, uh, so we did zero, zero, 0819, uh, sorry, uh, 0819, yeah, these two, and then how about 08 and 210? Yeah, looks like we can do that too. And here we go, 08210. Well, son of a gun, we got that too. So now we've, we've seen, since we, all these are, are four boxes, there's groups of four two variable terms. So we know there's always going to be a redundant one. And if you don't see a redundant one, you know you've got a problem. Uh, all right. Now, that takes care of 0, 1, 0, 2, and 0, 8. We've, we've compared all possible combinations with this group. And the only, the, we, only had, uh, we only had two unique ones, four all total. Now we combine every one of these terms that has a single one in it to every one of these that has two ones. But again, we have to line up the missing variable. So, uh, and we've checked off 0, 1, we've checked off 0, 2, we've checked off 0, 8, we've checked off 8, 9, and 8, 10, and 1, 9. Uh, but, we, uh, but we haven't checked off 1, 5, 2, 6. Um, yeah, we checked off the others. All right, so we compare 1, 5 with 5, 7. So, well, we're missing a, a B. So... The only one where we're missing a B down here is 1014. Can we combine uh, 1, 5 with 1014? Actually, no, we can't. Uh, turns out that um, turns out that we have a 1 here and a 0 there, and one, two ones here and two zeros there. So uh, since that 1 doesn't line up with one of these ones, it, 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 we're differing by three variables. So that's not going to work. Uh, so there is no... So 1, 5 did not get used, which means it it's prime. Doesn't combine with any other group of two to make a group of four. All right, how about one nine? We're missing an A. So can you combine one nine with six fourteen? Uh, no, you can't. And but we did use one nine already, so it's it's already checked off. How about two six? Missing a B. Uh, can two six combine with ten fourteen? Let's see. Yes, it can. We're going to drop the A and the B is already gone, so we'll just have C, uh, D prime. So that'll be 2, 6, 10, 14, C, D prime. Okay, and of course we know there's going to be another way to combine this. Uh, we'll find out probably 2, 10, uh, 6, 14. But anyway, all right. And then uh, is there any other one missing a B? Nope, that's the only one. Okay, here's another one missing an A, uh, 2, 10. Can 210 combine with 614? Yes, it turns out it can. And we'll drop the B, and we'll have dash dash 10, and it's going to be identical to this. Again, two different ways to make this group of four. Uh, so, but we check these off. Uh, and then uh, 89, missing a D. 8967, will that work? Let's see. Nope, it will not work. They differ by three variables. And that's the only one missing a D, so that, that leaves 8, 9. And then how about 8, 10? Missing a uh, C. Can 8, 10 combine with 5, 7? No. They differ by all three variables. Um, so that is, um, that is, uh, that's it. So now we're done. We've compared all of group 2, or sorry, all of group 1, one with all of group 2, and we only found 2, 6, 10, 14, and 2, 10, 6, 14 combining. All right, so now we have to, I, I should have done the check marks on this. Maybe I'll fix this. But, and then we'll cross off the duplicates here. So, so this, these are the ones that we use. So the ones we haven't used are 1, 5, 5, 7, and 6, 7. And then we cross out the duplicates here. And we have 0, 1, 8, 9, 0, 2, 8, 10, and 2, 6, 10, 14. Doesn't really matter the order of the min terms. So, so we have a total of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 prime implicants uh, to put on our prime implicant selection chart. So let's do that. So now we're going to make the prime implicant selection chart. And here it is. And we list our, we list our six prime implicants down here. Now I probably should, I think I'll pause this and fix this and because uh, 
I want to put on here what the terms actually are. So I'm going to pause this and fix this. Okay. Um, all right, so here's the prime applicant chart. So let me um, talk about this just a little bit because uh, I do want you to understand how this works. So, okay. So first off, you see that we've listed all six of the prime implicants we developed with our first chart. And we've listed them down here in this column. Now, we also put across the top of, uh, of, of our chart all the min terms which were in the original problem, 0, 1, 2, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 14. Now, for each row, we've indicated which min terms are involved. So for instance, in B prime, C prime, it involves min terms 0, 1, 8, and 9. For, for B prime, D prime, it involves, well, 0, 2, 8, 10, so 0, 2, 8, and 10. And C, D prime involves 2, 6, 10, 14. 2, 6, 10, and 14. And then 1, 5, involve, which is the A prime, C prime, D term, or, you know, that would be 0, dash, 0, 1, okay? It involves min terms 1 and 5. So we mark these off. And then this is min terms 5 and 7, and this is min terms 6 and 7. All right, so now the next step is to, is to stare from the top of the chart all the way to the bottom down each column and identify any column or any column or columns that only have a single X. So let's see, take a look and see what, where do you, what columns do you see that might have only a single X. Aha, here's one, nine. There's only one X in that column. So we circle that, and oh look, also column 14 has a single X. Now, what are the implications of that? The implication of that is that, uh, that in those columns, uh, the, the, the min term for that row is the only, uh, the prime implicant for that row, or that term, is the only prime implicant that covers that min term. So no other min term covers min term nine except for B prime C prime. No other term, no other prime implicant covers min term nine except for B prime C prime. And no other term or prime implicant covers min term 14 except for C D prime. Now what about the other ones? What about for say min term six? Well, C D prime covers min term six, but also A prime B C does. What about min term seven? Well, a prime B D covers it, but so does A prime B C, and so forth. So you can see for all the other terms, there the, these these min terms are covered by by more than one term, but the but min term nine is only covered by B prime C prime, min term fourteen is only covered by C D prime. So, what do you think that makes B prime C prime and C D prime? It makes them essential. If you did not include them in the solution, you would be missing, in the case of B prime, C prime, you'll be missing min term nine for sure because nothing else covers it. And if you don't include C, D prime, you're gonna miss 14 for sure. You might get 10 by including B, D prime, B prime, D prime. You might get six by including A prime, B, C. You might get two by including B prime, D prime. But you will not get 14 no matter what you do because it's the only, only C, D prime covers it. So these two are essential. Now, because they're essential, we must include them in the solution. And since they're in the solution, guess what that, that the implication of that is? That we are already automatically covering min term 0, 1, 2, 6, 8, and 10. Do you see why? If we have B prime, C prime, since it covers 0 and 1 and 8, they're automatically included. And since we have CD prime, because we have to have it for min term 14, we're already killing off two, six, and 10. So we might as well go ahead and mark those off our chart. So what we do is we draw a line through our essentials, like that. And then every X that we cover, we draw a vertical line, zeroing out that column, so we know we don't have to worry about those, the min terms in that column. So we go ahead and 
cover those all. And then we stand back and we look at this chart and what do we see? We see in this chart now what's left. Is there anything left? Is there, are there any min terms that are not crossed out? And the answer is, well, yeah, there are. Min term 5 and min term 7 have not been crossed out. Now, this is where we have to, we have to look at this and say, okay, uh, if we, what we, what's the best way to cross out min term 5 and 7? Now, we have options. We could take out 5 by adding a prime c prime d, and we could take out 7 by adding a prime b c. But we'd have to have two more terms to do that. We could just take a prime bd and kill off 5 and 7 in one fell swoop, giving us our solution, b prime c prime plus c d prime plus a prime b d. And that's what we do. We use that one. And so our final solution, now we've crossed out all the min terms. The blacks are the essentials, and the red were the one non-essential that we needed to complete our solution. And hopefully that makes really good sense to you. Now, for some reason, students get all uh, wacky when it comes to this prime implicate chart, and they start drawing lines all over the place without any real grasp of what they're doing with the lines. All the lines are doing is showing you what you eliminate once you select the essentials. And that leaves you then with a, hopefully, steely-eyed view of what you have yet to do. And if you really wanted to be, uh, you know, to simplify it, you just remove all your essentials and all the min terms that were already taken care of, and then you just look at what's left, and you pick the best solution. Now, in the case of a simple problem like this, and more, most problems with not too many variables, like four or five, you're never going to have probably anything with a terrible mess down here with where you can't just look at it and figure out the best solution. But if you had, say, 12 variables, you could easily have, a, uh, it could be complicated enough, you wouldn't be able to figure that out. And that's where Petrick's method comes in. So, uh, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to, I think I'll stop this video and post it, and then I'm just going to continue and record the next video and post that for Monday. Um, Okay, so let me do that.